Hi guys, it is Friday night, so you know what that means. A bunch of my friends asked me, do I want to go out to a club and get my groove on? And I said, you know what? I do want to get my groove on, but at home, talking about lenses like I like to do. Plus, those friends I mentioned are imaginary. So let's get into it. Now, for those of you who have been lucky enough to stumble across my channel by some random chance, you know that I have been reviewing a lot of the Sony wide-angle lenses for the APS-C. From a little Dougie here, the little ZV-E10. Oh, we have so many options right now for wide-angle lenses. Great time to be a Sony APS-C shooter. But I was getting a lot of comments on uh, these videos. Well, a lot of them were, you know, this is amazing, the best review I've ever seen. You seem like a perfect individual. And all that made perfect sense to me. But a lot of people were actually asking, how does this lens do in low light? Or this lens do in low light? So I wanted to clear up a little confusion. Now, I will show you some low light tests because there is a reason to do those, and uh, a lot of that has to do with basically how the lens performs in low light in terms of autofocusing. But I was getting the sense from the comments that that isn't what people were asking about. They were just asking which lens is best in low light, and that answer is pretty simple. Whatever the lowest number of f-stop that you have on the lens that is the best lens to take out in low light. If you have a 1.4, that's gonna let in more light than your f4 lens. It is that simple. And also, um, the 1.4 on, say, the Viltrox is gonna have the same amount of brightness as the 1.4 on the Sigma and the 1.4 on the Sony 15 millimeter. They will all let in the same amount of light. In fact, 1.4, would be the same on a full frame lens, a micro four, third lens, micro four thirds lens, or an APS-C lens. I swear, I haven't been drinking much, that is. It is Friday night, after all. But uh, let's say you set up your lights here in this gorgeous studio, and um, I have the light set on, what's that? I have the light on 16% right now, and I am at F2 on this 24 millimeter G Master. Now, if I swap this out, for an F2 on my Sony APS-C, my ZV-E10, then uh, I won't have to adjust my lights. In fact, if I get my GH5 and then I use an F2 on my GH5, again, the lights don't have to change. Everything will be the same. Are you following? Now, there will be changes in terms of background blur, the amount of blur that you are getting, but the light itself does not change. So anyway, let's go over to the old computational device and I will show you some footage of the lenses in low light and we can just talk about the differences. We are in Final Cut and we're gonna do a little bit of math while we talk about these lenses in low light because I am a cool guy. Can it get cooler than math and lenses on a Friday night? I think it cannot. But I have this uh, handy little f-stop chart from phototraces.com because uh, every time you go up a stop, on your lens, you uh, you lose half the light. So when you go down a stop, you gain uh, double the light. When you go up a stop on your lens, when you go from f 1.4 to f 2, let's say, you are halving the light that is hitting the sensor. So let's pay attention to the full stops here. So you have uh, f 1.0 to start, then you go up a full stop, which means you're letting in half the amount of light now at 1.4. At f2, half the amount of light yet again, f2.8. So same thing, every time you get to a full stop. So as you can see, the difference between an f1.4 and an f4 is a great deal of light loss, which is why the f1.4 is going to be so much better in low light. Now, uh, in terms of the ISO in your camera, that is uh, just gain being put in. It's basically, you know, fake light being put uh, into your camera. They're just bumping the exposure artificially for you. And that luckily is linear. So uh, 100, uh, ISO 100, if you go to ISO 200, that is double the amount of gain that is being applied to your image. So ISO, if you go to ISO 400, is double the amount from 200. It is not like f-stops, it is linear. So the f-stops, just check out this chart and you will see. And now I will show you a uh, real tangible examples of this. This is all of the lenses. And right here, you can see the Viltrox 13, the Sony 15, and the Sigma 
16. The 1.4 lenses, they're at ISO 1250 because this was a very low light condition. So we already started with uh, ISO 1250 and uh, the Samyang, which is F2, that one that is a full stop higher, that is ISO 2500 because we had to double the amount of gain being put onto the image to expose it the same way because it is a full stop higher. You see what I'm saying? And then um, F2.8 is another full stop higher than F2 and F2.8 on the Tamron is 5000 and the Sony 10 to 20 is another full stop higher than the Tamron's 2.8. So that is double that ISO 5000. So the camera had to go to ISO 10,000. Just so look at the difference between say the Sony 15 millimeter 1.4 is here at ISO 1250 and the Sony 10 to 20 F4 starts at ISO 10,000 right here in the backyard. So that is the difference between the amount of gain needed. And obviously the uh, Sony 15 millimeter 1.4 is gonna have a much cleaner, much better image. And then I just kept turning down the lights. And as you can see, it just got worse and worse in terms of uh, the amount of ISO needed. And the ZV-E10 maxes out at ISO 32,000. So the 10 to 20 was already maxed out on my second level of lights at ISO 32,000, whereas the Sony 15 millimeter 1.4 is only at ISO 4,000. So then I turned the lights down even further. And uh, now the um, most of them are maxed out except the 1.4s and the 1.8. The 1.4s are at 16,000 ISO and uh, the 11 millimeters at 25,600. Everyone else is maxed out. And as you can see, the 10 to 20 is faring the worst by far. Although, uh, if you look at the Samyang, that cannot keep focus at this point when the ISO is maxed out at 32,000. And to be fair, that's just a very low light conditions. But all of the other lenses are amazingly good at auto focusing. All of them, including the Viltrox and the Sigma, they kept holding focus no matter how uh, dark it was. Whereas the Samyang, it started to really fall apart in terms of the autofocus when it got into really low light conditions. And then I just turned the lights off altogether and we are standing here in the moonlight and the Sigma and the Sony and the Viltrox, the 1.4 lenses were still not fully maxed out. They are 25,600 ISO in darkness. I turned off all the lights. I was being lit by the moon and that is all. And uh, so just pretty amazing. Now I will show you um, the extreme low light condition. I'll start with the one that was ISO 4000 and I will just let that play because it's hard to see the differences when they're all on screen at once. So full screen, hopefully you'll be able to see how much better the 1.4s are compared to the ones that uh, have a much higher f-stop. So I will show you the first one will be extreme low light starting at 4000 and then I'll just turn the lights off altogether and be in the dark. And here we go. So there you have it. Obviously the 1.4s were best in low light. And the fact is the Viltrox, the Sony and the Sigma, although 1.4 lenses for them. So it's the Sony 15, the Viltrox 13 and the Sigma 16. They were uh, amazing at autofocus and they let in the most amount of light. So if you're looking for ultimate low light lenses, go with one of those Three. The Samyang was the only lens that really struggled in low light in terms of trying to get autofocus, but it is an F2, so that's going to let in a lot more light than, say, the Sony 10 to 20. The Sony 10 to 20 is the only lens that I would say definitely don't take out in a very low light situation. All of the other lenses, 
not too bad. The, the Tamron 2.8 is okay. The Samyang 2.0 will be okay until you get to the point where it starts losing focus altogether. I hope this cleared things up for you guys. And, uh, you know, I think that the Sony autofocus uh, on those three lenses is just so flawless. I couldn't get it. Even the 10 to 20 F4, even though you couldn't really see the image, it was still maintaining focus. So the focusing is not an issue at all on the Sony's, but uh, you do have to factor in the f-stop to figure out which lens is right for you in the situation anyway that's it just uh, short and sweet uh, you know now i'm gonna go enjoy the rest of my friday night by watching brooklyn 99 i think on netflix because i like that show i mean why would i watch it if i didn't like it anyway if you haven't seen it go go tune in affiliate links below for brooklyn 99 not really, but the, the lenses, yes, for sure. Click on all of those. And since you're still here, why don't you check out the review I did of the Sigma 16mm f1.4, which I think is the best value lens in the history of lenses. Full frame, APS-C, micro four thirds, doesn't matter, all of them. It is literally the best value lens I have ever seen. Just go ahead and watch that review. All right, we'll talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.